All of a sudden, all these lads are coming after me. <laughs> so, <laughs> he was Mr. West Ham at the time. Everyone loved him, and I, I was quite thankful that he looked after me. They love to drink. Really? Love to drink. <laughs> Look, I, I, that's all I think they know how to do. We were not going to get promoted. I could just feel it. When you signed to West Ham, it was on the same day they were playing away at Wimbledon, mm. and you went straight into the squad. What was that like for you, walking to that dressing room for the first time? I ain't gonna lie, it was a bit daunting, but because there were some big characters in that dressing room. David James, Jermaine Defoe, Michael Carrick, Don Hutchison. These are the people that you, you watch on TV and look up to and you dream about playing with. And obviously I'm going through the, again in this dressing room thinking, oh God, I'm, I'm sitting next to these guys playing. But at the end of the day, then when you get onto the pitch, the football and all that goes away because you, your talent just shines through and you just want to go and prove that you, you're worthy of being, in, being at West Ham. Did anyone tell the players that you'd signed? Or did you just turn up that day? Or did the I gaffer go, by the way, lads, uh, if a guy comes in here called Marlon Harewood, he does play for us now, he's signed. Uh, I think so make him feel welcome, I think they already you? know before then, really, because it obviously gets publicised yeah. now. So they obviously know that I've signed and um, that I'm coming in. But obviously, I don't know if they knew I was coming in for that actual <laughs> game. But they, they knew I was signing and I was a part of West Ham. Did anyone put their arm around you and like welcome you in? Come sit next to me, Marlon. Uh, well, not just like that. But <laughs> <laughs> I'll look after you. Come on. Michael Carrick was the was the guy that sort of looked after me very well at West Ham because he, he was Mr. West Ham at the time. Everyone loved him and I, I was quite thankful that he looked after me um, in everything I did where I lived and come pick me up and take me to training and stuff. It, yeah, he looked after me quite well. What was the banter like at West Ham? It was wicked. Yeah, it was right up there. I don't think you could do some of the things that we did at West Ham nowadays, obviously, because it's health and safety, different stuff. <laughs> what were you doing? Like, there was a health and safety concern. Just loads of stuff, loads of stuff. You just can't, but that, that gesture was, was, was good. Your home debut for West Ham weren't bad, was it? It was all right, a couple of goals. A couple yeah. of goals, you know. Uh, that's what you do. Upton Park, what was that like walking out oh, at Upton Park unreal. for the first time? Yeah, it's unreal, it's unreal. When you, know, when you have conversations with people and they say, what, what does it actually feel like? It, you, you can't describe it until you're actually in it and you're walking out and hearing the Bubbles song and how you feel the adrenaline, the, the fans, they're so passionate down yeah. there. It's, it's, it's an amazing time for me to be part of that, to be fair. Did they have a song for you? I don't know, really. It's just, I'm, I'm no, I'm not really. That's disappointing. No, it was. I'm no, well, well no, I'm not <laughs> no, so, Everyone's got so, that one. Yeah, so <laughs> I'll take that. You'll take that. Oh, there's only one Marlon Well, yeah, that, you'd be I'll disappointed if there was two. What was that like when you moved abroad? Because when you were very young mm. at Nottingham Forest, they put you on loan at Hacker in Finland. Yeah. That, that was what strange. What was that like? No, I know. I, I just went with it because it was Dave Bassett at. Um, he was a manager of Forest at the time, and he just said, I want you to go and get some experience. But I think it was just because he was friends with the, the manager there, Keith Armstrong. Keith right. Care. He was good mates, so the Geordie guy. Um, so I just went with it. I said, OK. So I just went to Finland and played in this team. And I was there for two seasons. The first year, we won the league. Yeah. And then the second, league, second year, we won the league again. And then we got into the, the Cup Winners' Cup. Like, yeah. So you were for league qualifiers and stuff like that. Amazing. So I played like in Banger and stuff like that. Did, but but Finland was amazing to be fair. Did you learn the language? No, Finnish is <laughs> really hard. Yeah. Uh, well, I did learn some of the language, the, the naughty ones. Yeah. I almost got me in trouble one night because the lads like telling me to say this word to this girl. And I said the girl and, and then all of a sudden all these lads are coming after me. <laughs> so, <laughs> did you know what it translated to in the end? Yeah, but yeah, I can't really say. I'll, I'll tell you. Tell me afterwards. Yeah. Tell me afterwards. <laughs> um, what did you gain from that experience in Finland? Oh, a lot. Just uh, obviously going abroad, seeing the different countries, how different cultures and how people do stuff and that, and obviously meeting loads of. I still speak to the lads from Finland, which is nice. Oh, and, really? Yeah, really nice. So it's quite good. How are they getting on? Um, got families, kids, <laughs> <laughs> moved on, and obviously not playing football. They're just doing normal life. And you moved to. China as well in 2011. Yeah. How did that experience compare to the one you had in Finland? Oh, mad, different. God, China was unbelievable. It's busy, it's packed. The, the, the culture over there, it's literally, you've got the rich side and you just got bang the poor side. It was an experience that I actually loved and thrived off, and especially the team I went to, they um, got relegated to the, to the Division One, and they wanted to go back to the Super League. That's yep. what it's called in China. 
Um, we went on a mad unbeaten run and we got promoted and they, they loved that and they, they celebrate like crazy, which is it's a good time to be part of. What's the social life like in China? They love to drink. Really? Love to drink. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I think they know how to do. Love to drink, and they got some the dices game. There's a game that they play um, it's with dices, and you, they play that all night, literally. How does that work? What's this game? I can't even. I, I can't even explain it to you. You're but too hammered I, by I the time I, you're playing. Yeah, you're just rolling play these dices. It, but I can't remember um, what the actual game is. But I just know how to play it. Did you do any travelling whilst you're out there? Go and see the sites of where they you were. Didn't really have time to. They didn't have time to um, because um, the games are just like so quick and fast. And the thing is, away games, you're you're flying. I was to, gonna say, how to you get everywhere. to these games? Yeah, you're flying everywhere. First like, class? Um, no, they had their own. They had their own plane. Yeah, their own planes that the company <laughs> did. So we literally flew everywhere to our games. Talking about promotions, promoted in China. You won the league in Finland. You went promotion with West Ham through the playoffs. Newcastle promotion. What's better for you, getting promoted by the playoffs yeah. or getting promoted by winning the league? Yeah, it's a good question. Mm. Yeah, I like that one. I don't know. Because the, the playoffs is more excitement in the sense of you've got a lot more to ride on and you've got two games yeah. to literally to get try and get through to the final and then the final and then it's, it's more... I'd think I'd rather getting promoted like first and second because the playoffs is so undecided really. And you get to go on holiday a little bit earlier. Yeah, I think so. So yeah, I think getting promoted is probably better for me. But I guess that feeling that you had missing out on going up through the playoffs yeah. to then go up through the playoffs the following, probably, year. The following year must have been like... Well, I, we, no, I knew we was going to get promoted. Really? Yeah, yeah, definitely. How come? Just because we've been there before and we, we weren't going to... We weren't going to... We weren't not going to get promoted. I could just feel it. Is there anything you miss from football now? The dressing room. Yeah. The dressing room banter, like going in every morning, seeing the lads and having a banner, seeing everyone's what happened, what, what people got up to and stuff. But yeah, the dressing room is the... I don't miss playing. I was going to say, is there anything you don't miss? No, nah, I don't miss playing. Why is that? I don't know. I don't know. It's just uh, 20, over 20 years of doing the same thing week in, week out. Did you ever officially retire? I've never really officially done it. Is that because you've got a game coming up? Yeah, we have. Um, Harvey, Harvey from So Solid. 21 seconds, tut, tut, tut. Yeah, that's yeah. the one. He, he called me out um, and said, do you fancy doing a game? That's brave. An All-Stars. <laughs> and I said, yeah, why not? Because we have an AC13 FC team. We do a lot for charity. Um, I do a lot of stuff and involve my teams and get a lot of legends to play in the game and stuff. So, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's going to be a good thing. Because to be fair... Oh, here we go. I've got a little... Um, I've done a ball for my little charity that I've got, Dom Food Love Mission. It. So Love it. Feed the homeless and all the kids and stuff. So kids in schools and we That's go great. around and... When's the this, game? The 1st of November. And who have you got on your team? Um, have you called in any favours? I've got Wes Brown, <laughs> Anton Ferdinand, <laughs> Paul Koncheski. Wow. Stylian Petrov. Uh, the list goes on. Do you know who's in MC Harvey's team? Um, no, I think he's got a few London boys. Right. Um, uh, Clinton Morrison, Leo McKenzie. Wow. He's called few... in some favours as well. Yeah, he has, he has, he has. I think Marlon King's flying back over to play as well. What? Yeah. Amazing. So it should be good. Marlon, all the best with the charity game, mate. Thank you very much. You're a legend.